Hey guys, what's up? It's Wolf here with Noli. How are my adventures doing? Welcome back to another Grand Fantasia guide video or starting guide video for mostly trying to get new players into the game if they are interested in getting into Grand Fantasia. So it, this has been kind of separated longly. <laughs> I think the last guide was like a month or two ago, probably longer. Um, I've been looking like all over YouTube for any video that's going to be anything I'm covering similarly or anything. If I find a video that I think you guys should watch as a beginner, I'm going to put it down in the description. There's quite a bit of them that I believe people should uh, watch. So some of it I'm going to be avoiding going over if it's already been gone over. So with that said, uh, let's start with uh, sprites. All right, so I spent a lot of time relearning the game through my Archer Rework playthrough and can now confidently tell you guys a few things about the sprite. Not everything, some of the things I still haven't remembered, some things have completely left my mind or I have never touched or had a reason to touch. Uh, this is just basic stuff to get you guys into the game. So first things first, I will tell you guys this. Silverleaf is the best sprite in the entire game. It is mostly because it gives you mining, foraging, hunting, and scavenging. These are all the essential things you need to start crafting like weapons and armor. And once you choose Silverleaf, your difficult choice, you're thinking that you're just stuck with a sprite that makes useless material because you don't have anything to craft. Well, you'd be right, but you're actually kind of wrong on that too, because in the very beginning areas, you will have a very large chance to drop a purple chest, which actually drops one of those instruments. So you can actually end up getting yours that you want. If you don't end up getting yours, that you want and you are pretty much at at least one gold you would want to come over here to any class master in any of the three cities there's a class master in every city so you can just go to NPC. well bring out the map with m go to the npc and just scroll down until you find class master right there and auto route to it then it'll move you towards it. Then once you add the class master, what you want to do is come down here to the shop. And as you can see, like I said, at least have one gold or at least 96 silver. And once you have that amount, you can choose between which one you actually need. The reason I say silver leaf is the best sprite in the game is because I forgot how weird the layout is for a lot of the sprites. Because all I'll tell you guys this, all I played is Druid, and my Druid is like years old, so I, it's been a while since I've touched like early game. A long time since I've touched early game. So, I guess I'll start explaining this. So, inside of this, the sword sprite, the sword crafting, requires both uh, foraging and mining because you would need the rocks and stones and stuff from that in order to craft swords. And as you can see on this, mining is missing. So obviously, if you guys take silver leaf, you'll have that and you wouldn't have to worry about having to grab extra sprites and filling up extra slots for what you need. Now, this, this NPC actually sells both level 6 and level 21 sprites. The level 6 sprites can only be maxed up to level 20. So right now, if I was to buy this, this sprite for the archer armor, it would only be able to go up from 6 to 20. Then once it's at 20, I would have to get rid of it because there's nothing else I can craft into it and it cannot evolve. Only your main sprite that you picked at the start of the game 
can evolve. The sub sprites cannot. Please do remember that. So once you're at level 20, you would want to get rid of it at an altar. And these altars are outside of every main city in a, a lot of the open map. They're not at the main city at all. So for this map, for this main city, you would want to go to Moonlight and go to the Forest Altar. Any symbol like this on the outside maps, on overworld maps, that says Altar is where you want to go to release your sprite. For Kazlau, it's Kazlau Plain. And this is the Grassland Altar. For Jail, it is the Steam, Steam Mine Mountain. And it is the Altar of Sand. That is where you want to go to release your, your level 6 sprite. Because that's pretty much all you can reach from that point, I'm pretty sure. But after that, once you get rid of them, you would come back here and buy the next stage of it. Which will be level 21. Because by the time you get this to level 20, you, you will be ready for level 21 sprite. So you would buy that next. Then you would then level 21 can only max out to level 70. No, no, level 21 can only max out to level 50. Then after level 50, it can only max out to level 70. That's that's what that does. My bad. My brain just kind of there. Because as you can see here, it can only go up to level 70. Then I have other sprites that are only going up to level 100. Um, these are like late game sprites. I think level 70 sprites only go up to level 80, right? It's somewhere that around there, but you guys basically get the gist of it. They have a max. Once they reach that max, they can't go above it. And just going here and hovering over this the little stars will tell you what their max is and how far they can go and once you get that max you would you got to get rid of that sprite and go on to the next then go on to the next and go on to the next i wish they would put a lot more sprites inside of here because level 50 is a hurdle <laughs> to get to like once you get to level 50 i would say you'll probably be out leveling your sprite unless you're like very aggressive with it and keeping up with your sprite so do keep that in mind so i guess i will take you guys to an altar and tell you guys what to push so when you get to an altar you would scroll down to the bottom that says release your sprite back to nature this is basically removing your sprite your main sprite cannot be removed so you don't have to worry about that only your sub sprites can be removed which is a great thing because if you're I, I would just say keep an eye on their names just make sure you're removing the right one because you don't want to ruin remove the wrong one by mistake like m maybe there's one that you maxed out and you don't try you're not trying to get rid of it it was probably best to remember the names before you release them, hover over that name of what you want to get rid of. Uh, sprites can't be removed if they have any uh, furniture on it. Furniture or costumes. So that's also another warning they'll give you. Or tell you to remove all the stuff before you do that. Um, your main sprite can also join you in combat. And fight with weapons. Your sub sprites can cannot do that. Your sub sprites cannot fight with the weapons or anything like that. Um, each weapon can give a certain buff. Uh, if you go down, look at the very bottom where it says included sprite skill, strike three. That is the skill the sprite gets from that weapon. If you come on here over here to a cape, it will tell you that it gives the sprite skill song of ward. 
and you come down to this accessory, it'll tell you it gives you the song of Paralyze. So, strike three is just a normal attack that happens instantly. Song, song of Ward has a chance to cast Magic Defense within a period of time. And Song of Paralyze actually just causes magic damage. And it reduces def defense and magic defense for that target. So actually, pretty, pretty much things to remember. Um, I think you only get sprite combat after level, level 30, I believe? Level 31? Around there, you should get sprite combat, and it should open up for you. It's through a certain quest. I have not figured out what special is. Oh, it's for a costume weapon. I don't think... Hmm. I don't think I've ever touched any of this. I don't even think there's a reason to truly touch any of this. I haven't dabbled in a sprite costume. <laughs> but that's one thing to note. All right. Uh, sprite skills. Your sprite can learn skills through sprite skill books as well. Uh, oh yeah, I was going to show you guys this release and choose whichever one you want to get rid of. It's that simple. And this is why I was talking about that you can attain sprites at certain altars as well. But you have to have a certain reputation. So if you don't have a reputation, you can't buy it. Reputations are easy to fill. You can fill up these fames through the essence that drop on the ground. Um, well, the unknown powers. So I have an example right here. I got these powers as well. Uh, there should be some in my inventory as well, I believe. Uh, let's see. I was trying to hold on to some stuff for tutorial sake. I may have gotten rid of it. Hold on, I can also show it through Auction House. Reputation. Here, here are good examples. Even tells you what altar it goes to as well. What map and where they go. You can also get special titles from these altars as well. So if you max it out, you can push claim title, and once you reach the condition of it, it'll give you a title. Some of them have stats, some of them don't. Some of them are just bragging rights. But uh, back to the books. Um, you could put in gear into this. But uh, sprite skills. You could put uh, random pieces of gear that are, I think, green and up. It's either green and up, up or blue or up. But you can sacrifice them to this. This takes a long process. I just want this to be known. Because you can only put them in there one by one. And it barely increases. It barely gets points. You'll probably get like. You know probably like. A maximum of like. 15. 18. Then it'll just cycle between. You know around that area. Of points. So it takes a lot of gear. To get one skill point. For that sprite. And it all varies, to be honest, because if it's like higher level gear you're putting in here, it can only go to advance. So I've been only putting level 100 gear into my sprite and sacrificing it, and all those points have been going into advanced. So I would say around like, probably like level 6 to... 30 or 40 would be novice and level 50 through 60 no probably 60 through 70 or 60 through 80 is intermediate and higher than that is advanced is what I want to say like I said I'm not very knowledgeable on that it's just things that I feel like you guys should know okay other basic things now that we're out of the more advanced page of that you guys know spamming talk can give you 
uh, mood increase. So if they are in the green, spam the chant, it can actually change their mood a little bit. It will never go up to the red enjoyment icon, such as this. This mood can only be caused by a sprite getting, getting an event when it's already in the yellow stage or by potion. This actually gives a significant buff to um, gaining XP for your sprites. So I would say always try to keep this as high as possible in the red. So we've explained the training, crafting, and scavenging in the last video. Alchemy table. Alchemy table is well. Alchemy table is well material. Like all of this is well area. Except for this, this is more of grind heavy. This is for the free to play. Best mount in the game for starting off for um, weaker characters who can't use combat mounts or can get a combat mount because this is a level 100 speed mount without any restrictions. And without those restrictions, you can just start up a level 1 character and just instantly have 100% speed and com start completing quests left and right. But yeah, to get this clay, you would have to go to an alchemy, alchemy NPC and buy the normal red clay that they have. Um, to do magic table, you would have to purchase magic clay. As you see here, this only works on this. Uh, we did have um, S Alchemy, but Al S Alchemy has been removed from from the game for now, so we don't know when that'll come back. Uh, we have E Tab, which is basically for all of the nucleus that you collect in the game. Nucleus is somewhat well and in-game material stuff so don't worry about this early game this is just something i have to bring up just so you guys won't get confused of what this is this is in-game stuff do not worry about it because these things are superly high priced right now like incredibly insanely high priced <laughs> like some of them will go for like seven, 75 gold because most of our community are made out of maniacs. So, other details. Um, I haven't actually known what relationship is. I think that also has something to do with um, the sprite thing. Oh! That's what I was trying to remember. My AHD kicked in and I totally forgot. Um, when releasing a sprite, please keep in mind, if this is not max, you're going to take a very heavy hit to your, um, uh, sprite messenger fame, which is down here. Mine's a zero because I haven't really been like fully maxing these out. The best way to complete this is by doing level six sprites and getting them to 20 and releasing them constantly over and over again until you get to 50,000. That is the best way in my opinion to actually max this, especially if you are starting the game and you want to use that time. And if you already have like a character that has a whole bunch of gold, send a lot of the gold over there and just start maxing this. That is definitely one of the perfect ways to do this. I'm, I'm sorry to say it is, it is, but this is very important for a lot of yellow gear late game, such as yellow capes. Um, I believe the only class that is able to craft a yellow cape for themselves without needing a uh, sprite messenger is um, mech master or anybody in the mech category actually. Machinist category. Yeah, anybody playing mechanic and machinist 
down this path can craft their own yellow capes. But the special thing about these capes for um, players, uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Is that they can actually gain stats. So, how do I say it? As you can see, look at that. It even tells you reputation that you need for these uh, capes as well. These these capes don't give special abilities, but they do give high stats as well. Because you can compare this level 90 to my level 95, and you can see I I would get a lot more substats from the yellow cape than I would from the blue cape you get inside of a dungeon. So if you guys want that, start maxing out beginner sprites and start getting rid of them. That would be the next best thing, unless you guys have already filled up all six slots of your sprites. All right, that is what everything I believe new players should know. Just new players. Like I said, I'm not making any guide for like advanced players or anybody who's already, you know, gotten into the game. We're trying to get people into the game so they can learn by themselves, you know, and get a little bit interested in it. Um, right now, I am on my archer class that I have been uh, doing the playthrough with. Uh, it's... This is a good example and a good thing I didn't get to max just yet because I can see if it gives me a quest just for hitting level 50 level 50 because I actually don't remember uh, if it automatically gives the quest. So it is sprites are pretty simple. They aren't like super aggressive to learn. Uh, you do have lottery to where you can auto auto pick a number, place bets. And when you place those bets, it can also give you a uh, quest that's up here. There's no more quests up here inside of the daily quests that is just placing a bet. And it will give you a little bit of XP. But right now it's closed, so I can't really do this or show you guys. But that's how you place it. Oh, it's already it's already going through. Duh. So at 8 p.m. Eastern is when the lottery go, goes through and starts picking winners. And you have a chance of winning, you know, being number one and winning this prize. Or you can end up being two or three and getting like a little portion of the prize, if I remember correctly. Or you end up getting this. Whichever one. I, it's been a long time since I've won the lottery here. But it actually gives you more information right here by pushing that question mark and, you know, reading that. Only players above level 30 can get that. And I am not maxed out yet. <laughs> Alright, another one we go. But um, there are a few more things that I guess I can tell you about Sprite. Uh, you have... Um, you have gambling. <laughs> yep, you have Gamba. Along with the lottery, you have um, Alchemy Go, which I'm pretty sure, if I remember correctly, is... Um, what was it? What's it called? The slot machines. I think that's what it is, the slot machines. And you have boxing as well, to where you can put in, like continuations you could just challenge it but you need a uh, coconut coins so you have to go to uh this island right here and go over in this area and start exchange it started exchanging your gold and yes you need gold to be able to uh join these games that are on here if you don't have gold to transform into coins you cannot play any of this so that's probably why you guys are, you know, wondering how do you do this? This is all RNG based stuff, by the way. Uh, be careful. Uh, you can join boxing matches and start fighting against other players too with um, join. 
I haven't done it before. I just know it's a thing. Yeah, that's a bug that happens now and then. It gives you event, but doesn't give you anything. Click on detail, go back. Then it gives you the mission. Okay, we have one more. But, okay, hold up. But to reach uh, Coconut Island and begin your gambling addiction, you would go all the way over here because the game is going to give you a ticket. And that is a uh, ticket that sends you to that location. I don't know if I have it. But then again, uh, once you get around level 30, you, you should automatically have the teleporter open as well. But if you have the ticket and you're already over here, it's a free way to go there if you have the ticket. Other than that, if you go to the altar, well, not the altar, the uh, town portal, it will cost you probably like, I think, three or, or two gold. I don't know why it's going the long way. I'm just showing you guys this until my sprite is done. Just a little bit of extra little details of the uh, sprite that I can do on this character. So as I go here, it costs, yeah, it costs basically a gold and a half to get to the island. Then you can just, well, uh, should I even show you guys the game edition? Nah, you guys, new players don't need to know that because they won't have that much gold. So now it's maxed out. I should have a quest. Okay. Here is where you evolve your sprite. My sprite is maxed out. And now I need these items in order to finish the quest. And I'll get one of these. This guy is always going to be the main sprite you come back to when you're ready to level your sprite. So at level 51, come to this sprite immediately and grab the quest. Then at level 71, you come back to this sprite again and grab its level 71 sprite in order to evolve it again. And I'm pretty sure that's the last one. I think level 51 and 71 are the mains. Oh, hold on. Yeah, right here. There we go. So level 21, 51 and 71 are any other times you want to come back to this sprite. So always come back to this sprite when you hit these levels. So now that that's inside of your head, I guess we can move on from sprites, huh? All right, so the next thing we're gonna be talking about is enhancing your gear. So enhancing your equipment is actually pretty easy. Um, I would recommend using only grade A scrolls to bring up your gear. I mean, if you only have B, that's fine. Never use C scrolls. They're terrible. The rate is terrible. A scrolls are the best ones, and you'll start getting those at least probably mid-game. I'd say they'll pop up actually pretty often as long as you're picking up every single thing you see. I mean, obviously you're going to have to empty out your inventory a lot, but these scrolls are actually really good. And they're the best scrolls for enchanting. So, for an example here, um, do I have a gear that I haven't enchanted yet? Hopefully so. So, enhancing gear is actually pretty easy and straightforward. Uh, get do I really want to use a red sword? Ah, screw up on that. So, enchanting. So, well, enhancing. So, enhancing, you would bring out a weapon with that you want to enhance. Put it in. Oh wait, no, red weapons can't go in there. That's that's a good example to show you guys. That that, that was all planned. You'd be crazy if it wasn't. 
If you think it wasn't, you're, you're, you're insane. Anywho, put in the gear <laughs> that is purple or lower. And what you'd want to do is have a defense scroll is for armors and attack scrolls are for weapons. So I'm going to put in a defense scroll. And it doesn't tell you the rates of the system. It doesn't tell you the success rates, unfortunately. That is the only flaw of fortifying your gear or enhancing it. It doesn't tell you the rates. But you can also multi mostly do this um this has always been covering up the words i don't know what they were thinking i think they were trying to lower it but you can type how many times you want this to happen inside of the second one you can tell it what level you want it to go up to i would recommend for new players to only go up to five because you start losing a lot of duration this is one of those games that starts killing duration every time you fail so that is a thing to keep in mind so I could just push that and it auto goes through it and there's one thing that you guys should read on the scroll that is actually very 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 important Anything that is plus nine and up, failure will result in zero. But anything after, well, no, anything up to plus nine is failure and the duration can, you know, go down. But anything after plus nine will have a chance of disappearing that gear that's that's a big issue I just want that to be known it's like if you try and get to plus 10 from 9 you have I would say an 80% chance of that weapon or equipment getting destroyed this is why most most players stop at least 7 or 10 no at least 7 or 9 I would say you Unless you're doing, like, I guess, way harder content, it wouldn't really matter too much. Unless you're, like, trying to solo dungeons. Which, you don't have to solo dungeons, you just can. Pretty sure you can find others who are running that dungeon and, and you know, will, help, will be willing to help you out. Like, guild members, stuff like that, too. But, um, I will say this. At plus 15... Uh, you don't have to worry about the gear getting destroyed anymore, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Because then, after plus 15, you're going to be using S-scrolls. S-scrolls are only used for weapons that are plus 15 through 18. They are only used for that. I want this to be known that they are only used for that. But here's also the other thing. If you start using these scrolls at plus 15 without any like charms or anything, you're going to need mallets. And mallets are expensive. Very expensive right now. They they cost quite a lot. You're gonna you're gonna be saving up for a lot of mallets if you guys don't have a guarantee charm. And those guarantee charms are even costly as well. Um, if I was to say anything, I would say get it up to at least plus seven. Then buy a master charm that can get it up to plus ten. You only need three of those. So you would come in here, type in master, then you would see these. Right now, there are people selling them in bulks. You can't just, unfortunately, in Grand Fantasia, you can't just come in here, just buy what you need out of that stack and just walk off with it. You have to buy the whole stack. I wish they would change that. That would be a lot better for players. But, you know, that's how that's set up. 
So you can most of the time find some solo ones. And if they pop up inside of the magic table, they will be selling a lot more often. So as soon as you see a magic table for enhancing gear, go straight to the auction house. A lot of people will probably or more than likely be selling them left and right. Always check auction house if you're and trying to enchant your weapons. Uh, the best way I could say if you're going for anything higher than plus 10 as a free to play or a new player, I would say only do it for yellow weapons, which yellow weapons are plus 50. No, oh, level 50 and up. Every five levels, it oh, your sp sprite is like. A legendary weapon. Well, I guess I can just show that through option. Yeah, anything that is yellow. Um, the only thing you cannot enhance are relics and accessories. Relics and accessories cannot be enhanced. Uh, yellow gear does not exist until at least level 70. Well, I would say level 75, wouldn't I? Uh, no, more of level 78 to level set. Well, level 77. That is the level 77 gear, right? Yeah. I would say the lowest, like, yellow gear you're going to see is, like, level 77. So you won't have to worry about, like, any yellow gear on that area because most of your gear is going to be orange until you reach level 77, like, gear graphic. So, now that that's known, that's just something to keep in mind with these auctions. And I guess I can show you guys how to use these uh, charms or inscriptions. So, enhance. Put them in here. Oh, I, I did take out the gear that I was using to show an example. Um, there's a different way to enhance red gear, which I say there's really no point of me showing that here because it's for starters. Then I would put in the defense scrolls and it gives me a guarantee. There will be no fails and it will use your inscriptions. Um, there is there is a NPC that I haven't quite figured out yet as well that gives um, uh, it's in Caslo that gives like fortification materials or fortification item that you have to craft. Yeah, let's go to Kazla because I wonder if any other players can actually like explain this one because I don't think anybody has talked about this NPC at all. And it's this guy up here. I say this is the only NPC that I haven't seen talk talked about. And I feel like it could be a free to play access to it. Here we go. Sage Fortification Stones. After plus nine, enchant will not be... The gear will not disappear, but will increase the success rate. The equipment will be damaged, and repairing will lower the max duration. Some say it requires a Lucky Clover. And... Yeah, I don't know what this is. So we're going to buy it. Because I'm curious about this. And I'm sure we just go to the alchemist. And he'll be able to sort this out. Because if this works how I'm thinking. Ah. Okay. It is working how I, how I thought. So there are lower forms of the lucky clover. 
that just increases the rate and not a guarantee that you could put in here along with a voodoo body double which i've never seen miss to be honest it's only a 10 percent chance of actually succeeding also that's something to keep in mind that's kind of iffy if you want to actually build those and lose have a chance of losing these you are going to have to use like a like an alchemy um an alchemy clover if you want a hundred percent chance which sage fortified like stones you'll barely see inside of auction but they increase success rate and give you like little things like that but it's I see why nobody talks about it because these items barely show up. I wish the devs would put items like this inside of like mutated dungeon or inside of normal dungeons because that, that would help players out a lot towards like enhancing gear and it would make more sense for them to start showing up in dungeons because everything right now is, to enhance your weapons is well based. All those items I just showed you, the masters, inscriptions, those are all well based and they will only come into shop through your wells. <laughs> so as long as the games have wells, it will be in the shop. I mean, either that or you can go buy them yourselves inside of enhancing and it's going to be through these clovers. So if anything, you would buy either seven of these, then three of these, then three of these, then three of these. You'll buy one of this, one of this, no, nope. two of these. Or you can go one of this, one of this, one of this, then one of this. <laughs> Just letting you know that's how that works. <laughs> Or you can end up buying 13 of these or 15 of these to buy one of these or two of these. You, you'll you see how it goes. It's it's very money hungry. It's always been money hungry. I say if anything you want to get like plus 20 is going to cost your pockets and your pockets will be ran for that. Unless somebody is selling it inside of auction house so if you're trying to go free to play just keep looking at auction house keep saving up your gold for when you need to enhance that gear with that said um that is i guess the end of uh gear enhancing um i guess i'll tell you guys like extra details so you don't have to like worry about it too much um enhanced Uh huh? Is it this? Or is it uh, trinkets? Yeah, here we go. Uh, this we have not figured out yet. There is an item in here that you're supposed to put in here and it transfers to another weapon. We, ha we have yet to figure this out. <laughs> They're the same type of weapon, so I think it has to be another hammer, if I am correct, correct here. And I don't think I have another hammer, because I'm still maxing out my... Uh, my hammer sprite so let's do a different example so let's do a staff yeah so you would need an item in here and I think it would transfer like it either transfers stats on that um on that wand or something else completely different 
So you can use the transfer spirit stones to transfer the enhancements and the inlay. Okay, so yeah, it, it's exactly what I was thinking. It's it's the whole enchantment transfer thing. This is actually new. I want that to be known that this is actually new, and we weren't told about this. And we have yet to see a spirit stone in a game. We have yet to see a single spirit stone in the entire game yet. That That's the odd part. They haven't shown the whole spirit stone yet. So ignore this. This is useless to us right now. And then you have accessory engraving. This is only for yellow weapon well yellow accessories anything that has stars so you guys can see the empty stars right there i can put this in oh well i gotta take it off um i wonder do i have no i don't I have to grab it from my mailbox okay so if you guys have been receiving these scrolls they are for accessory accessory and cape enhancements only if that accessory or cape have stars. And the issue with this is that you you won't have this. So getting these scrolls early on kind of suck because you won't have a use for it. It'll just be sitting inside of your mailbox box into them. So I guess the issue with this would be um, you would have to save save it. So. For an example, I guess we'll use an S roll. And these weird looking charms are to get a actual success out of any of your trinkets. So they look drastically different from the normal like enhancing gear scrolls, obviously. So if this one just has a chance of increasing it, so I'm just going to use those. So you come in here. Anything that has a star, you'll put in. You'll see that there's no stars, but I, I will. Oh well, sh that's very long text. Okay, I'll just show it. Anywho, <laughs> you put in the scroll, and you would actually pick what type of style you want it to be. Do you want it to be magic attack, range attack, or just normal physical attack? So for this one. I would choose physical attack because that's what it is, you know, aiming at. And since I'm a druid that uses wolf form, I would want normal attack. So this is going to add attack stats as I, you know, enhance it. Oh, well, I'm using the wrong scrolls. Duh. Never mind. <laughs> We're going to be using A or B scrolls. <laughs> that That is my bad. I forgot how scrolls worked, apparently. Ah, uh, these are the non-tradable ones, so I'm going to use these. So, enhance or engravement plus one now you guys can see I got a defense and attack stat that just added plus 19 this also enhances the magic stat as well this is how engravement works for any also current players who've been confused about this as well this is how you add stats to these trinkets And once it gets to a certain point, uh, what do we add? Okay, yeah, we're gonna start using these now since we're at plus three. Uh, I wanted you guys to be careful because this has a lower, lower, uh, little condition versus like anything else of enhancing a normal scroll. Want to show it then? Plus, now we only have three left. Two left. 
Now we have one left. So before we actually go through that uh that failure, I do want to show you guys what happens when you get two plus five. What? Oh, went to the wrong thing. Great. There we go. So we're going to put in the guarantee. Okay, so oh, I was think it's plus seven. Oh, no, it's plus six. But as you can see, it added a stat. And it added plus 30 to it. Plus 30 agility, which means I got crit chance increased for my wolf form, which does significantly nothing for me, really. But this is what happens when um, we engrave it past the uh, point. Okay, so you can keep doing this. You can repair it. Um, I'm not sure... Um, if it'll get damaged like the rest of them. Repair. Does it go down to four? No, it doesn't. So, you can keep doing this as much as you want. This isn't as high as risk <laughs> as as um, enchanting gear. All, only thing that's detrimental for you is, I would say, is losing out on your scrolls. Your scrolls are going to die very fast. Uh, it doesn't tell us the rates for this either, which is also something that's pretty stupid. Okay, we're at plus seven. As long as you have scrolls, you are perfectly fine in enhancing your trinkets and stuff like that so if you want to max them out you can fully go for that as long as you have engravement scrolls now it hasn't been really costly or anything like that it's just only taken it's only taken silver it hasn't taken gold at all so engravements there you go these are something you're gonna have to worry about late game that is nothing to actually think about early game. And if you guys want to... Hold on. I guess I should take that back off. Um, if you guys want to re-roll it... Uh, if I remember correctly... You would have to... Uh, let me grab... Another... sufficient level uh oh yeah they have to be actually enhanced so i if i remember correctly you sacrifice other other yellow items in order to reroll certain abilities yep so if you want to reroll will or anything you would have to you would have to pick one and <laughs> re-roll it by sacrificing this that's one of the main issues of that not not fun to do, but if you want the perfect, like, trinket, then I would recommend it. I'm not sure if these stack also, though. If they do stack, that that's actually very strong and great, but I don't, I don't think they stack. Because it seems like I could still get it. I don't think it would be on the table if I couldn't. But 
something to keep in mind. So I'm going to put these in there. We're done with that. And that has been um, the Craftsman and Enhancing Your Gear. All right. So that is basically everything towards the guide that I wanted to go over for starters was mainly the sprite and enhancing your gear. And that's mainly the only thing you need to know because those are the main mechanics of the game, funny enough. Um, I guess Sprite Island is actually easy to figure out. There are already a whole bunch of videos of Sprite Island out there. It has not changed at all and not a single thing has changed about it from what I know but I like I said I will put videos in the description of other things you guys can check out as guides these are the main things that I want to check out because not too many people have like went into detail with these newer things that are in the game and not a lot of us have talked about newer things that are in the game because <laughs> The developers that are working on Grand Fantasia don't really give us a lot of details on or in-depth details or videos on how to do it. I mean, they have a YouTube channel for a reason that apparently just doesn't exist to them. And it's been like 13 to 12 years since they posted anything on the fucking channel. So, yeah. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then. Uh... Peace out. Hopefully this guide helped you.